Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Peter Murphy begins now. Turning to coronavirus now, and Tasmania's death toll has risen to three after a man died in Burnie today. For all the details, we cross live now to our reporter, Michelle Wisby. Hello, Michelle. What do we know about this latest case so far? Pete, we heard this afternoon that a man in his 80s has died at the Northwest Regional Hospital today. Health authorities confirmed he was a passenger on board the Ruby Princess cruise ship. He's the third person to die in Tasmania that's tested positive for the coronavirus. All of our fatal cases have come from that one cruise ship that's been at the centre of the coronavirus spread right across Australia. Public Health isn't releasing any further details, but the Chief Medical Officer has thanked those working at the Burnie Hospital, which is currently experiencing an outbreak of the disease. As staff work to contain that, we learned today that hospitals and aged care homes have gone into lockdown, meaning the vast majority of visitors have been banned from entering those facilities. Tasmania Police has also warned officers will be out in force this Easter weekend. They'll be turning all non-essential travellers around in a bid to control the coronavirus spread. Here's a closer look at the latest developments. An Easter trip to the shack, a much-loved Tasmanian tradition. But this year, the long weekend will be very different. If you're travelling um, and if you haven't got a reasonable excuse uh, to go down to your shack, then you will not only be turned around, then expect uh, to be charged and you could be facing a, nearly a $17,000 fine. Extra police on patrol in holiday hotspots, stopping the spread of coronavirus between the regions. What a terrible situation to be in, to actually hide in your shack, um, to make sure that you're not seen there. But there certainly will be uh, patrols, there will be random checks, um, so people should expect the unexpected. It is important that we do not take this virus to our coastal communities, many of them which are older, uh, more vulnerable communities. The Premier announcing from midday today hospitals and aged care homes will ban visitors for at least two weeks. There are some exceptions for a partner visiting for the birth of a child, parents seeing a dependent child or for compassionate and end of life reasons. Any decision to restrict access for visitors is a difficult decision and not taken lightly. However, in the interest of reducing the risk of infection to patients, visitors or the community, it's felt that this is an appropriate decision to take. What we don't want over the Easter period are people with ha time on their hands thinking that what we'll do is pop in and see mum and dad. Overnight, coronavirus cases in Tasmania rose by 3 to 89. Two of those new cases, staff members at the Northwest Regional Hospital, bringing the number of people infected in the outbreak there to seven. Staff on the ground have been working to identify staff members who may have been identified as close contacts in order to ensure that they are not presenting to work. Today I'll be writing to general practitioners and asking them to have a very low threshold for testing people who are in the northwest with respiratory symptoms. Aged care provider Southern Cross Care has locked down its Yarrandu facility at Somerset after a resident was exposed to one of the diagnosed health workers. The woman has been isolated but is not displaying symptoms. To ease the burden on the region's hospitals, all emergency patients from the Devonport area will temporarily be taken to Launceston for treatment. With the decrease in bed space capacity at the Northwest Regional as part of the outbreak management and also the focus of staff on managing the outbreak and close contact process, it's important that we are seeking to reduce any burden that we can. Health authorities also said flu vaccinations are now trickling into Tasmania with priority to be given to vulnerable people when they're available. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. A man has faced court in Launceston for allegedly flouting quarantine restrictions for the second time in just two days. It comes as the state's top cop issues a stern warning to anyone breaking the rules that they will be caught. As authorities go door to door checking on self isolations, it seems not everyone is doing their bit keeping the state safe. Last night, a, a man was uh, arrested who was uh, previously arrested on Sunday night. The 50 year old was charged on Sunday with failing to comply with quarantine orders set by the public health director. He was bailed. Yesterday, it's alleged he did the exact same thing again. We'll allege that uh, he then left his room. Um, and he was charged also with discharging a missile as well. So it's not as if uh, this person uh, hasn't had warnings. 
Emergency services have now conducted 5,000 compliance checks since tough rules were imposed. Police are defending security at quarantine sites run by the government. But again, we're relying on people to do the right thing. We take no pleasure from this. I know that uh, the Commissioner takes no pleasure from having to um, have his officers enforce these rules. But this is about saving lives and that is the most important thing. The accused man has now swapped his hotel room for a cell. Richard Pollock appeared in court this afternoon via video link. He did not enter a plea. His application for bail was denied by the magistrate. He'll appear in court again on Thursday. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. To other news now, and convicted murderer Sue Neil Fraser is facing another setback in her appeal. The case was meant to be heard in Hobart at the Supreme Court next month, but due to travel restrictions, her interstate defence team can't travel to Tasmania. Both sides agreeing the case would be too complex and lengthy to be heard over video link. A hearing date has been set for August or November if restrictions are still in place. There will be another directions hearing in June. A powerful cyclone has made landfall in Vanuatu, flattening homes and leaving many without power. Social distancing measures were lifted so people could seek shelter in evacuation centres as the Category 5 system smashed the Pacific Island nation. Cyclone Harold is now tracking southeast, heading towards Fiji and Tonga. A young South Hobart girl has been given a birthday gift to remember in the form of a singing mobile billboard. Harper Murphy turned six years old today, but because of travel restrictions, her dad, who lives in Melbourne, couldn't visit. Instead, he organised this special present as a surprise. It's very, very close to the kids, so it's a really beautiful gesture. Very unique and, and very creative. And told us about his idea and we thought you're a little bit crazy, but what a great idea and what a great way to celebrate a birthday when, when you can't be here in person because of the isolation. Harper says it was a very exciting present from Dad and requested her favourite Minions songs to be played over the sound system. Hope she had a happy day. A much-loved Tasmanian product is returning to supermarket shelves, rebranded and made by a new company after a short hiatus. Fruit growers Westaway Raspberry Farm has taken over the recipe for the Ultra-C blackcurrant and raspberry syrups with the finished product rebranded, but described as being identical by fans. Ploughing empty fields in preparation for a new crop, all part of a day's work at the Westaway Raspberry Farm. These fields grow more than 200 tonnes of berry varieties each year. We've got the site here at Westaway and we've got another site down near Norfolk. Um, we've got about a total of about 25 hectares of raspberries. We've got about 15 hectares of black currants. The family owned and operated business has produced the fruit for Cascades Ultra Sea Syrups for more than 30 years. The brand was taken over by Coca-Cola but slowly disappeared off supermarket shelves. That's when Westaway Raspberry Farm approached them to save the iconic product. So they offered um, to, to return that recipe to us as a farm to allow us to then produce that, 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 that syrup and formula going forward. With the recipe back in local hands, it has a new name and label design, but the production chain remains, with Cascades Factory crushing the berries and Juicy Eye all bottling and distributing the syrup. And, perhaps most importantly, according to Hobart megafan Dave Lennon, it has the same original flavour. Tasmanian-made produce is the best and if you mess with it and add too much sugar it's just taking away that natural side and the nice refreshing side of it. And we've been frantically working with um, wonderful wonderful people at Juicy Isle um, to get a new replacement product out there on shelves um, before stocks of Coca-Cola's Cascade uh, syrups ran out. If you're wanting to get a bottle of the syrup made from these black currant bushes, it's available at independent supermarkets across Tasmania. And for those based interstate or who can't go into store, there's good news. It's also available at Dan Murphy's online. It's just like the original from 1886, but it's back in the hands of a trusted Tasmanian business now and there's no risk of it disappearing or changing anytime soon. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. As businesses across the state buckle at the knees from a lack of demand, some are working overtime to bolster our health system. Pod Matrix has been building modules for specialised coronavirus testing clinics, which will begin opening tomorrow. An army of workers building weapons against one of Tasmania's biggest threats. This team working around the clock to build coronavirus consulting clinics. I spoke to the staff about it and uh, what we was going to have to do to try and get these out in a, in a time frame and uh, was uh, 
all willing to put their hand up and, and knew what the cause was. Each module has three rooms allowing patients to be seen in a safe space. They're being installed here at PW1, more to be delivered to the Elfin Sports Centre in Launceston and the East Devonport Sports Centre. Yeah, no, we've been sort of through the weekend and late nights, early starts. We're just sort of pushing through where we need to to get everything done. Uh, so we've got antibacterial paint, uh, medical basins, um, RCD protected uh, GPA, so everything that you'll see in the hospital are going into these buildings. The job is also a lifeline for the business and its workers after losing $18 million worth of tourism projects that are now on hold. So we're one big happy family and uh, you know we were just really worried about their welfare and what they was going to do. The, the company and the government have done a great job in sort of keeping us all employed and, and we'll take what we can get at the moment. So. The company's no stranger to big projects, but Josh says these 12 modules could be their most important job yet. So that they can help Tasmanians that need it. Another local company joining the fight, Penguin Composites, tasked to fit out three buses to be used as mobile testing clinics across the state. Creative responses in our state's battle against COVID-19. Louise Huber, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian mother has said she's stunned by public's response to a call for laptop computers. At a time when more children are doing their schoolwork from home, Shelley Fowle is distributing donated laptops to those that need them most. Another day, another donation to the digital world. Shelley Fowle has seen an instant response to her call for computers to help families shift their schooling online. Now I've got about 45 to 50 families waiting for laptops and I can't meet the demand. Since starting a Facebook page asking for the machines, Shelley says she's been stunned by not only the public's generosity, but how sought after laptops have become, especially as schools encourage students to shift to online learning. I've had um, people contacting me who are homeless, people who um, are single mums with multiple children. Um, they have no access to laptops and their children are suffering trying to do the online learnings. Ten-year-old Morgan received hers this week. It's a huge relief for mum Josephine, who was worried her daughter would miss out if she couldn't go to school. I didn't know how my daughter was going to do a schooling online. It's a lot of financial relief with three children. Like, you can't, you know, pull money out of nowhere to get a laptop. The wish list is rapidly lengthening, with new requests from families coming in each day. When we're all isolated, these little gifts of kindness are what makes the world go round, so... Very much appreciated. If you can help, search for the Laptops for Children in Launceston Facebook page. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. A crisis package worth $2 million a month has been announced to steer the state's racing industry through the current crisis. But the announcement hasn't won over trainer Bill Ryan, who says the industry should never have shut down in the first place. At Bill Ryan's property in Longford, his champion filly, still a star, is still waiting to shine again. We don't want $2 million a month, we want to work. We want to earn our own money. The Tasmanian Racing Hall of Fame inductee is critical of the state government's call to suspend all forms of the sport, claiming it was premature, especially as racing continues on the mainland. As for the new emergency package... What do you want to train horses for when there aren't any races? What are you going to do with them? You're going to have them run around the track, ran, ran, ran the training track, going nowhere like the rest of us. You know, it's just bloody stupid. Money for trainers will be split depending on how many animals are registered to them. Details are still being finalised, but the Premier says animal welfare is a chief concern, with spot checks to be carried out. We don't want people travelling from regional Tasmania into the, the major cities to where the tracks are and then returning. Mr Ryan is spelling most of his horses during the shutdown. He says anything longer than a four-week break will cripple parts of the industry. They get about your package, that's all right for a month, but then just get us back working, please, please, please. And as for the radical plan for Tasmania to host AFL games in a quarantine zone, the Premier is open to the idea, although he hasn't been approached by the league yet. If we can get through this quicker than other states, then opportunities may arise. Uh, but right now, at this moment, it's about making sure that people stay safe.
evening. A cool and cloudy day today in the west and south. The high of 19 at Launceston, at Hobart 18, 17 at Burnie, at Devonport reaching 16. 17 was a popular temperature about Smithton, Lowhead and Ooze, St Helens and Strawn 16 and Lyweeny 12. On the close-up, low-level cloud covering the west and south of the state. Further out, thunderstorms over northwest WA, while mid-level cloud can be seen over central Australia. Tomorrow, a high sits over the eastern bite, extending a ridge over most of the continent, while a trough sits over inland eastern Australia. Southwest to southeasterly winds tomorrow, 10 to 20 knots, swells up to 2.5 metres in the west and south and below 1 metre in the north. Tomorrow's forecast now, Hobart 17, partly cloudy across Jeeveston and Bothwell. In the north, Launceston mostly sunny and 19, Devonport 19, 18 and mostly sunny at Cressy. Burnie and Strawn tomorrow looking partly cloudy, possible showers at Curry. St Helens reaching a high of 17, 16 and partly cloudy about Swansea and Orford. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast Thursday, fine apart from areas of morning fog and frost patches. Friday showers developing in the north and west during the day and Saturday showers contracting to the west and far south in the afternoon. Capital cities 35 and mostly sunny in Perth tomorrow, Sydney expecting showers and Melbourne 19 and cloudy. And currently Hobart 14 and cloudy, Launceston 13 and Devonport partly cloudy. That's all for weather tonight, Murph. Thanks very much for that, Jackie. See you tomorrow night. That's all our news for now. I'll have updates throughout the evening and the latest will be back at 8.30 tonight with Michael Usher and Melissa Doyle. Thanks for joining us. Good night. <laughs>